All right, five minutes. I want to talk today about one of my biggest pet peeves in current C++ fashion, which is just sprinkling our value references all over the place. What are you doing? Specifically, I'm frustrated at y'all doing this in places where it either doesn't matter or is actively making the code less self-documenting, clear, and or reliable. I saw a couple examples of this in the conference already. Uh, function signatures like G. And I understand why you are trying to say that the burden is on the caller to move the value into G when you're calling it. You see that? But if I remove the R value reference from the function signature over G, it works the same. And it is the same code gen. It's the same requirements on the caller. Same API, fewer tokens. But maybe you're not convinced. Let's look at the two together in a chain. Let me ask you, when is my allocation T actually destroyed here? It isn't in G, but you can only see that when you look at the body of G, whereas it's guaranteed by the function signature itself in H. This is important. And I'm tired of explaining this. I explain this all the time. An R value reference parameter by itself does not mean is moved. It means this object may be moved, right? But wait, you say, I know all of these function signatures where that is not the case. Pushback on vector has an R value reference uh, overload, and that's a guaranteed move. How can I possibly say that G is only a maybe move. And for that, I would ask you to go read any of the sources of wisdom that are trustworthy on C++ on the internet, which is not many. <laughs> but go look at the core guidelines or Google C++ style guide, or in this particular topic, a lot of things. And I don't want you to go look at passing, uh, parameter passing or move semantics or R value references. Instead, I want you to study and think much harder on something much simpler the guidance on overload sets. We use overload sets to describe a set of operations that take different parameters but do basically the same thing. The uh, well-designed overload set is one where you can write a contract informally on the entire overload set, and no reader of that code will ever have to do overload resolution in their head to figure out what the behavior is, right? That's the definition of a good overload set. We can't have a R value ref pushback overload that has a different semantic than pushback of const T ref. Therefore, we have a guaranteed move in the case of pushback, right? Doing otherwise would be a terrible overload, would not be a good design. Thus my statement, the fundamental unit of design in C++ is not the function, it is the overload set. And as a downstream logical consequence of that, all of the R value reference function syncs that you see are doing guaranteed move because you are using them in conjunction with a const ref overload. That is an optimization of just passing the thing by value. Specifically, it's an optimization that does that for one fewer move constructor. In isolation, without the rest of the behavior required of the overload set, we just have the maybe move. And there is even precedent for this. Proposed APIs in the standard, like the RCU proposals, use this. There is a try update in those old proposals along exactly these lines. And I am not aware of any API in the standard or any other proposal that has a raw parameter sync R value ref that is not part of an overload set. And the last thing I want to say here is that I understand the intent, right? As API designers, we're often our own first customers. We're writing code that we're going to use ourselves maybe immediately. And we may well understand that in our own current context, we are done with an object, and that object in question might be expensive to copy. But that brings up another important point. The appropriateness of copying a bit of data is a property of the type, not of the API you happen to be invoking. If you have a ton of DNA data in a vector and it's several gigabytes long, you're correct, you probably don't want to copy that lightly. So passing that to a DNA sequence function, oh no, we need to avoid accidental copies. Uh, no, actually, that's the wrong way to think about it. 
it's a property of DNA, not a property of the function, right? So write a class that encapsulates, oh, this is big and scary and should not be copied lightly. Make that move only with a member function that has a big scary name like make very expensive copy. Don't do this lightly. So the rules as I see them. If you are writing a function that is syncing a parameter and the cost of a move is comparable to the work of the sync, then just do what pushback is doing. Const ref, R value ref overload, well understood semantics. It's a little bit more work for the maintainer to maintain two versions of that thing, and God help you if you have three different parameters that might be sunk, because then you get two to the n, well, you know, two to the three different combinatorics in there. Uh, it's a little bit more work for the compiler to have to do overload resolution and all of that, but it might matter. I give you permission to have that overload set for sure z's on parameter syncs when the body of the function is very cheap, right? If the body of the function is, I'm making an IO call, don't overload, right? Just like the extra move operation is not going to matter in any way. If you're writing a sync and the cost of the move is, uh, is small compared to the rest of the work, like you're making an IO call, just pass it by value. It's easy. It's less work for everyone and expresses the intent very clearly. Leave it to the caller to decide if they're done with their data or not because you do not know the context of every future caller of the API. That's why we have abstractions in the first place. And if you're writing a maybe sync, God help you, that is when you use an R value reference parameter by itself and that function had better be returning bool or providing some other mechanism to tell you whether it actually did the move. And if something is expensive and you want to avoid accidental copies, that's a property of the type, not a property of a single function. So make a new move only type and don't call that type unique. That is not what move only means. Ask me about uniqueness later. That's my talk.